Give to be like you, to leave this place. I haven't seen my home in weeks, and if it... Look at what they did to my boy. Welcome everybody, welcome back to Role Playing Games, to my little own corner in the internet where I like to talk about video games and today we're gonna be talking about Kingdoms of Amalur Re Reckoning, the remaster that just hit the market recently and uh, oh boy, sadly it pains me to say that there's huge problems and troubles in here. You see, Kingdoms of Amalur and me, we have a history. We have a history together. I love the game. I've spent the last eight years of my life wondering when will we get a second entry. There were many rumors of a game that was back in the day. There were many rumors of the game that actually the game was in development, the sequel, I'm saying. And the bankruptcy of the game and just the history that the game has, it has such a tragic history. But uh, let's talk about what Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning is, what can you get from the game. Normally I would just have done a review for the game like the many others that I have, but uh, in the end just a normal review of the ones that already are from back then would just do the trick because it's just a re-release. This doesn't look like a remaster, like I, I, I get it, right? I know it's just a remaster and it's not supposed to have this huge overhaul on models, assets and all that crazy stuff, but in the end, it's just a shameful of a remaster and more so even than that, it might actually feel like a demaster. There are two versions of the game that we have to talk about and those are the PC versions and the console version. Uh, I want to talk about what can you get, what are the game additions, what are the differences, what can the game give you and as for the uh, PC stuff, the game's supposed to have an upscaling and resolution with some frame rate uh, increment, but I mean for the vanilla game of the OG, it's just the same thing on the PC, the game looks exactly the same on the PC other than done some retextures and relightning done on the game with some little more dark, darker uh, tones on, on, the, on the blacks being noticeable. There isn't really that much change, I mean it's a game that graphically the art style of the game doesn't age that much. But in the end, it's just I, I don't think that it's actually worth it. What can you get if you get if you are playing on a on a PC? I mean what are the game additions? There's this FOB camera that it's actually missing on the consoles, just to be to be to be mentioned, just to point it out. The fix of the camera for the in with this FOB. There are more skills that you can actually do. This is quite amazing because the game certainly did needed it. There are some inventory changes, but I mean, there's not just they didn't make the change that it had, that the game actually needed. Uh, I don't think that a reactive should downright weigh the same as a full-on plate armor. And if you're a loot whore like me. This is still a problem, just some little addition to the uh, backpack, it's just not enough to fix the problem. The game really this does need some quality of life improvements and while I think that the game is just beautiful as it is, I'm in love with the game, like I said, the game and me, we have a history, I don't think that many of these changes that we have were relevant as some other remasters that we compare it for example if we, we if we compare this to uh dark souls 2 scholar of the first sin there were enemy relocations in there there were mechanics that they actually fixed when you usually normally played on the og dark souls 2 game the uh, torch was pretty much useless and now in the remaster uh, it has darker areas where you do need to to have this torch to be able to traverse it. 
And for example, uh, Wind Waker, which is a remaster that I always like to point out, that I always like to bring out. Uh, on the Wind Waker remaster, you get the fix for the quest of the uh, Triforce stuff. There's the fix on the navigation, the re navigation repetitiveness, repetitiveness that we get from traversing the sea and the world. There's just so much that could have been done in the game that it just hasn't been done. Now, for example, if you play it on console, it might actually be worth to get it because the upscaling and resolution it is highly noticeable in there. The 60 FPS it is highly noticeable those high those FPS, but there's some major performance issues that the game has shameful really shameful there's some frame rate losses in many of the places there's some popping on enemies npcs 3d model objects and this popping in the drop distance handling make the game make the character make character be stumbling around while, while he runs i'm gonna have a as you can see in the screen right now the, the dude is like I'm trying to get there. Uh, there's some major bugs on the quest. So far, I played it, the game for a whole bunch of time, and I have two major quest bugs where the main NPC just has to run back to some place. It gets stuck in somewhere, and, and not really gets stuck. He just stops and hey, hey, I'm, I need to get there. I, I escort me there, dude. And I'm like, dude, advance, move, help me, allow me to help you. And it's just makes me have this unsettling feeling that at all times, at any time of my playthrough, one of the main quests that also involve escorting character will pretty much receive the same treatment and get bugged throughout the through throughout the playthrough. It makes me feel like it's going to happen and makes me feel worried. The game's not supposed to make you feel worried, it's supposed to make you feel happy about playing it. There's so unimmersive to play this remaster. Now if we talk about the OG game, it's such a beautiful game, it's such a beautiful jewel, it's such a underrated RPG game and I think it deserves a whole lot more love than it, ha than it has. And it pains me to say the remaster just doesn't. This remaster doesn't live up to what Kingdom of Amalur is. Now what other additions might actually get you to get you compelled to get the game the fate edition uh, DLC but I mean it's just a DLC that lasts for five hours you can stretch it up as an open world that it is may maybe to eight hours and while I do think that it is quite appreciated quite a nice touch to have some new new content like brand new not some game editions it's just the game as it at its launch it's just shameful dude this really pains me because if you traverse to through Steam uh, reviews, Metacritic reviews, I, I I do not take these places as huge authorities on the matter. But the thing is that there are some many many opinions about gamers that say I'm here trying to support the game, but it just doesn't deserve it. This remaster doesn't deserve it. I I'm here throwing away my money, hoping to see a sequel, but it just it do it's not supposed to be like that, dude. This is not about reactivating the community. I have a different video on it. You check. It, you can check it in the video description. Th there's many statements of game producers, the, the game developers, marketing people that have stated so far that before they make decisions to get a sequel to happen or a series of game to bring back the games, they need the feedback of the community the, to see the reception that the game is getting and then based on that, because they're not these huge developers that just can say like, hey dude, develop that, develop that and develop that as well, we have the power, that we have the greenies to make it possible. It's just not the case here in Kingdoms of Amor, it's just not the case for this THQ Nordic. Many take for granted that the, the fact that we get the re-reckoning remaster confirms that we are getting a sequel, it's just not the truth. They need to see the reception of the game, they need the EA uh, good look to it to be able to release, a to develop a sequ sequel and they take hugely careful approaches and just the game reception, what it's getting right now, it's just not voting well. Makes me want to cry dude, I love this game. I, 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 a sequel for this game 
with the foundations that it has, oh boy, it could be one of the greatest RPGs of all times. But uh, other than that, I cannot bring myself to recommend you the game even though I love it. It's just not how it works, I cannot say to people, hey, go spend your money on them, go give them greenies in order to make Kingdoms of Amalu 2 to happen, it's just, that's not how it's supposed to be. If we are paying for something, if we are supporting for something, a support has to happen sideways. I give you something, you give me something, the game's supposed to be functional. Uh, I'm not sure they fixed it, but for they fixed this at uh, the time of this video. There's supposed to be a patch launching today. But uh, Xbox users weren't getting any achievements on the game. Well, the achievements and... There, there, there was supposed to be a day one patch trying to fix it, but they uh, delayed it mostly because they, probably they were trying to fix all of the things together. And, and they, the game actually, the, the developers actually show uh, love for the feedback. They actually show that that they care. But uh, at the state, at the current state of the game, what it has to offer to you. Just plainly not worth it and it pains me like I said it pains me way too much to say it because I just love the game dude I want to have a sequel for Kingdoms of Amalur let's just hope let's see what it happens how all of, how all of this develops let's really hope that Kingdoms of Amalur doesn't remain to be a kingdom of brokenness for way too much time this was RP James giving you my honest opinion on stuff. If you like the content, consider subscribing. Consider subscribing. Consider sticking around with Mary Old James because there will be a whole lot more coming your way. With that being said, I'll see you beautiful, beautiful gamers because I know you are. You're beautiful people. See you in the next one. Stay awesome.